This is Creality's newest iteration of the Ender 5, the Ender 5 S1. I really enjoyed the changes that Creality made to the Ender 3 with the S1 Pro revamp, and although it's been almost five years since I tested the original Ender 5, I'm happy to see some improvements here as well. The setup was relatively easy and took me under 30 minutes. Cable management is well thought out, and they include these clips to keep everything tidy and close to the frame. One of the first things that I did after building this machine was remove the polycarbonate build plate and registration screws, so I could put my own PEI textured one on. In my opinion, these polycarbonate beds stick too well to almost all materials and are incredibly easy to damage. Since Creality actually manufactures a PEI textured build plate, I would have liked to see that included here on this machine. One of the things that caught my attention right away was this aggressive part cooling fan and fan duct. This is a welcomed change to the somewhat underpowered 4010 blower fans found on the majority of older Creality printers and should help keep things cool while printing at higher speeds. This machine has a build volume of 220 by 220 on the X and Y and 280 on the Z and a cube style frame that aids in rigidity and has two handles on either side for easy carrying. One thing to be aware of is that this is not a core XY machine, it uses a traditional Cartesian motion system. This means the stepper motor for the X axis is mounted directly to the Y axis carriage, significantly increasing the weight of the gantry. It features a direct drive extruder and hot end similar to the one I saw on the Ender 3 Neo series of machines and is quoted to reach print temperatures of up to 300 degrees Celsius. The hot end assembly is accompanied by the CR Touch probe, which I've had pretty good results with on other machines. The bed also uses these silicone spacers instead of a spring, which is another good change from older Creality machines. To level the bed, all I did was tighten the leveling knobs evenly, then run the mesh bed level, followed by the paper test to set the Z offset. I went ahead and printed the files included on the full-size SD card with the supplied roll of white PLA filament. First was this Benchy. This printed really good. No stringing and the surface finish is really nice. Next, there was a small rabbit on the SD card. This also printed great, again, with no stringing and no artifacting from the kinematics. Judging by these prints, there's not much I need to do in terms of tuning, so let's load up the Ender 5 S1 profile in Prusa Slicer and slice some files. First print up is this Wild Rose Builds test cube. This file is free up on printables and you can print it yourself to compare your current printer. Again, this printed really well. No noticeable ringing and the top and bottom layers show very little sign of under or over extrusion. Next I tried to print this foldable R2-D2 model from Fab365. I've been trying to print this on various machines for about a month now and can never get the legs to finish without detaching from the build plate. The part of the model that did print though came out great. Finally I loaded up an articulated dragon model. For this I used a silk tricolor filament from Tronxy.
these models are a great test as there's tons of small parts that test retraction quite well. Removing the print shows off exactly why I like PEI coated build plates. The model stuck great during printing and released with very little force after it had cooled down. This thing turned out awesome. I'm not the biggest fan of gimmicky filaments like this tricolor PLA, but in some cases it can look super cool. Okay, this is a great machine, but there's a bit of an issue here. At its MSRP of 559 US dollars, it's just $40 cheaper than the recently announced K1 series printers from Creality, which boast an enclosure, clipper, Core XY kinematics, and a print speed three times faster than this machine. If you're doing your research for your next 3D printer, I'd probably wait for the K1 and K1 Max to be released. The only situation where I would recommend this printer is if you can find it for under $400 or if you're already running a Sonic pad with your other Creality machines and can clipperize this machine at no extra cost. Special thanks to SaneSmart for sending this machine in exchange for an honest review. I'll leave links in the description if you'd like to learn more about this printer. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.